the cooling. Okay guys, I'm back. We are going to continue Act 3. Yeah? Act 3 of this uh, Secret Pawn from Ashes event quest. Still the same day eh? from act, from when I'm playing Act 1 until Act 3. This is still the same day. So yeah, let's just continue. Okay, Albedo. Oh yeah, I saw what I missed eh, in that scene. There was another albedo, another fake one on the mountain. I just watched the actual thing on the YouTube just to search because it was lagging. Anyway, traveler, Paimon. I suppose your story is ready. Okay, so this is the story competition. Yep, yep. How about you? <laughs> uh, do you need some more time? No need. I am also ready to tell my story. All right. Paimon calls this. Paimon. Let's see. Please go ahead. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, mm -hmm. there was an evil researcher who went into the mountains and did a crazy experiment on whopper flowers to transform their appearance. After a lot of pain and suffering, the whopper flowers finally took on a human form. Then they stood mm -hmm. by the side of the mountain to wait for unsuspecting bypassers. Why does the story this sounds like so real? <laughs> like it's actually what's going on? To whoever spoke to them, they would ask them questions such as Who am I? Who are you? If the bypasser got the wrong answer, the last sound they'd make would be a yelp before the whopper flower ate them alive in one bite. Wow. <laughs> Oh, truly frightening. Yeah, Paimon is truly frightening. What the? You two aren't scared at all! Maybe I'm just really tough, I don't know. Don't go nitpicking, okay? If you didn't like the story, go write your own! In that case, I will add some horror elements in. Really? <laughs> um, after the whoop flowers eat some, they would turn into that person. Why does this sound like it's one sentence? In other words, the whopper flowers would ambush and then completely replace their victims. And then adopt their newfound identity. I think that both options were supposed to be one option. <laughs> and then what? Go back to where the person lives? Enter their home? Eat their whole family? Ah! Uh, Paima made up this story, but now Paima's the one who's scared <laughs> by it. It's a good story. Oh, may I write it down? I may bring it up in future conversations. What for? Just to scare people with? Yes. Yes. You've got a real mean streak, Albedo. So what's your story? Mine is a little longer than yours. It starts with an alchemist. A great alchemist once created Subject One. Subject One. Subject One was her proudest achievement. The first. And successfully blended into human society. No one ever would have thought that this friend of theirs was in fact a synthetic human. And this subject one is Albigo. <laughs> However, unbeknownst to subject one, the alchemist had tried the same experiment many times before he had come into being. Some of the rejects from failed experiments had been discarded, but had not died. Wait. Subject 2 was one such failed experiment. He was swallowed by a great dragon that came to rest upon a snow-swept mountain. Snow Many years later, he was resurrected by the dragon's mysterious power. He saw all kinds of people on the mountain, including Subject 1, who had somehow miraculously blended in among them. So you think Subject 2 is this imposter? Is that what you're trying to say? Never in Subject 2's wildest imagination had he thought it possible for experimental life forms such as they to deceive everyone so successfully. He saw the way deceive humans everyone? accepted Subject <laughs> 1 as a friend, witnessed their affection okay. as they addressed him by name. Okay. This was what Subject 2 wanted. Now, all that Subject 2 desired was to replace Subject 1 and take the joy of his existence for himself. Who? Uh, this is giving Paimon the chills. So scary. 
It's like saying that this other albedo wants to replace the the first albedo. Something subject like that. Two That's what it sounds like. Plan. He stole Subject 1's books and notes <gasps> and studied all that Subject 1 had learned from the alchemist. Subject 2 was highly intelligent and he learned quickly. He changed his face into an exact replica of Subject 1's face. It is. Then he found a plant with mimicry capabilities and transformed it using dragon blood and alchemy. This is not just a normal story, it's actually. It is actually Albedo and the second Albedo. And so, not only did Subject 2 transform his own appearance to perfectly match that of Subject 1, he also created a third entity, Subject 3. Subject 3? Another one? That's 3. That's why. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Does that mean. Wait, wait, wait. Continue. What? But Subject 2 wanted to become a perfected human. So, he erased a mark in both his and Subject 3's necks. For these marks were symbols of imperfection. Subject 2 wanted to become a perfect human, so he erased the mark on his and Subject 3's necks. For these marks. That means. Oh no, that means that was not 3, that was 2. Because number two doesn't have the mark. In my view, it was probably a subconscious act, an instinct. So it's not. Wait a minute. Albedo, are you. Were you deceiving us again? He so desperately craved to become a perfect human being that he forgot something. Human beings are defined by their flaws. Subject to his plan was meticulously crafted. Subject 3 would draw Subject 1's attention. After Subject 1 disposed of Subject 3, he would assume the threat had now disappeared and would let his guard down. Wait. 1 and 3 have the marks, right? 3 draws up 1's attention. 1 dispose 3. Okay, so 3 is gone already. You assume the threat had disappeared. And that is cut down. The next moment that Subject 1 was alone, Subject 2 would make his move. He would eliminate Subject 1 and become the only one remaining. Oh, okay. He would secretly replace the Subject 1 of everyone's memories and inherit his identity, residence, clothing, sword, name, and friends. People would have no idea that the individual they knew had become somebody else from one day to the next. Albedo, are you subject 1 or are you subject 2? <laughs> Which one are you now? <laughs> this is scary, what the heck? Uh, uh, this is way too scary! <laughs> I'm oh never going to be able to trust anyone again! Is this what actually is going right now? But just before subject 2 could carry out his plan, a unique stranger entered the mix. Okay. Subject 2 tried to make contact with this person, but found that they could somehow sense he was different from Subject ah, 1. Ah, yes. Okay. <sighs> what's wrong? Are you scared? You're, you're telling what's actually happened, right? What happened then? Yeah. What happened to the stranger? Well, the stranger is... He became a new stage in Subject 2's plan. One more person that Subject 2 had to dispose of. Yeah. Okay. It's as if there were three identical roses in the garden. Only one of the three was a fine specimen, while the other two were defective specimens that bore poisonous thorns. Okay. In all the world, only the gardener who tended to them could tell which was the good specimen. People do not like poisonous plants. Only a perfect rose can fetch a high price. If the inferior specimens wanted to conceal the fact of their worthlessness, they would have to take the gardener out of the picture wow. using their poisonous thorns. This is exactly what Subject 2 was thinking. So, he hid in the shadows and waited patiently. Maybe soon, he would get his chance to become truly human. 
This is not just a story, yeah. You're talking about the imposters of yourself. Those two. Two, because there was another one that we saw. These are real events, yeah. Trying to tell me the cruel and unbelievable truth. <sighs> that was intense! So what happened after that? Did Subject 2's plan succeed? Uh, Paimon can't bear thinking about it! If he succeeds, this is two then. <laughs> Fortunately, Meta is just a story. And even in this story, Subject 2 did not succeed. But... Dragon Spine. You can never let your guard down on Dragon Spine. Yeah, you're really telling what's actually happening right now. Monsters mutated with Durin's power and blood are also creatures of Rhine Daughter, just like me. You must beware of all yeah, you're not such a creatures. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. It's okay. I know what I am. You and I are both different, so there is no need for me to hide the truth from you. The only thing is that sometimes, when I think about how mighty the power of alchemy is, I feel so small. As beings who set foot in this world, how arrogant are we in desiring to control our destiny and in desiring to create? Is creation an arrogant act, Traveler? If not, why do we call the ones that created us and control us gods? Mm. If it is, then... What qualifies us to call ourselves creators? How far must we take our reverence and respect? Wow. And what purpose does it serve? How did you feel when you took out the imposter? Yeah. Nothing special. But whenever I think about it, I feel a twinge of grief. Poor Albedo. Hello? Traveler, are you here? Amber? Hey, is that Amber? Thought we might find you here. We're here to deliver a message from Cyrus. There's going to be a big event down at the base camp, and they want you there too, Traveler. Oh, Winter camp okay. is nearing its end. Apparently, even provisional instructors are required to attend. Looks like we need to go, Albedo. Bye for now. Then I won't keep you. I have some things to attend to here, so forgive me for not seeing you down. Don't worry about it. There have been no issues getting up and down the mountain recently. Is everyone ready? Let's not keep them waiting. Okay, let's go. Wow. Uh, yeah, we gotta go, but then we have to speak to Albedo though, so... Wait, what do you mean speak to Albedo? A character is currently involved in other quests. Cannot join this quest. Eh? Stevens is busy completing a quest of... <laughs> A land entombed. Then let's do that first. I found this treasure. Leave it to me. Three sites in total. One is where you found this, so there's two more. Okay. Act three started. Okay, now only start act three. Huh? Who is this guy? Joel's father? Allow me to introduce Yozerf. Ah. He's Joel's father. Traveler I was telling you about. The Traveler's helped me out loads in the past, and this time, we even built a snowman together. Joel has told me everything about you. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. Glad you're okay. You're finally reunited. Wow! This is amazing! Wait a second. Why is Cyrus discreetly wiping tears <laughs> away? And what is Pallet doing here? Pallet is the hero of the hour this time. Oh. Go on, Pallet. Tell us what happened in your own words. Okay. <clears throat> the weather was fine on that fateful day, and I had a feeling that Lady Luck was smiling down on me. 
So I trusted my god and set off to explore somewhere new, somewhere dangerous. Because where there is great danger, <laughs> there is also great treasure. Reckless Pirate. Uh, why does this sound so hard to believe? But I had only been away from the group for a short while when I fell down a slope and just started rolling. Oh. Uh-oh. Did my bad luck rip off on him when we ran into each other on the mountain? <laughs> the place I fell to was somewhere I didn't recognize, and I'd sustained a few injuries. I remember thinking to myself, this is the worst luck I've ever had in my whole life. Oh no. Uh... Oh no, Bennett. Then I met Yozerv. He'd heard the sound of me falling and came out to see what was going on. Huh? Wow! So it was completely by chance, by chance then! I thought he must have been someone from the Adventurers Guild here for the event, but after a few words of conversation, it was clear that he was having memory problems. He didn't even know his own name. Oh. The temperature was freezing, and there was no time to deal with all that there and then. So I convinced him to come back to the camp with me and figure everything else out after we got there. We got back to the camp, ran into Joel, and the moment he saw him, he froze for a second with this completely stunned expression on his face. And then he started oh. crying out, Dad! Dad! That's when Yozerv suddenly started to remember. My memory has still not fully recovered, but Joel and his mother, they are the only ones that I will not know that I cannot forget. Daddy. Some Daddy's memory. right here, Joel. If he doesn't remember right anything, here. it's... Wow. Yo, Zerf, don't you remember anything else at all? Yeah. The poor princess feeding the foxes? I, I'm sorry. I, I have no recollection. Maybe it's because of the head trauma. I, I'm not sure. I woke up and found myself covered in blood. My, my things were gone and, and there was nothing to indicate who I was or, or how I got there. I crawled uh -huh. into a cave and, and settled in for a slow recovery. <laughs> After my legs and feet were a little better, my hunting skills were what kept me alive. Okay. Dad, I was so worried about you. I'm all right now, Joel. Oh, don't cry. Daddy's not going anywhere. I'm here to stay. Oh, this is good. <laughs> also, this is good. Also. You know what, though? I definitely think my luck got worse after running into Bennett on that mountain. <laughs> no, <laughs> Bennett's gonna it. feel it. Uh, it's all I, his fault. I just no, it's no. Bad luck. <laughs> I just meant if it weren't for you, there's no way I ever would have run into Yozerv on a mountain yeah. this huge. Besides, we got back safely, didn't we? So don't blame yourself. Maybe sometimes miracles can only happen when you get just unlucky enough. Unlucky <laughs> miracles happen. Pallet. <laughs> <laughs> When did you become such a smooth talker, huh? Huh? Am I? I... I was just... telling the truth. Oh, yeah. I want to say thank you to... to the Traveler, Uncle Cyrus, Auntie Eula, and <laughs> Auntie Amber. Thanks, everyone. You all helped look after me, and I will always remember it. But I guess I can't take the snowman with me, or it'll melt once it leaves Dragon's Spine. <laughs> It's such a shame. Oh, I can help with that. One moment. Oh, Yula? Huh? Yula? Here, take this. It's powdered rhyme. Just add it to your snowman, and it will never melt. Oh? Wow! Really? <laughs> oh, this is awesome! You're the best, Auntie Yula! Dad, I have an unmeltable snowman now! <laughs> How can I ever repay you all? Don't mention it. We're all delighted for you. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. And from the bottom of my heart. Dad, I want to go move the snowman. Can we do it now, please? <laughs> okay. I'll be leaving with Joel now. I'm sure I'll see you all another day. Very well, very well. It's time for Pallet and I to have another discussion concerning his <clears throat> breaches of adventure discipline. <laughs> huh? Uh, but, but Cyrus, I, I think I kind of made up for my mistakes this time, you know? <laughs> See you guys! Oh, I made this for you and Amber. Think of it as a winter souvenir. Aw, are you sure? This must be really important to you. Come on now, just take it. No need to make such a fuss. Wow! Now our snowman won't melt either! Great! 
Thank you, Yuna. <laughs> You're welcome. Just keep it. That's all I ask. Amber and I have some business to attend to now. See you later. See you! <sighs> Everyone's gone! Mm. Seems like they've all got their own stuff to do now. <gasps> oh! You know what? We've been on Dragon Spine all this time, and somehow Paimon still forgot to ask Albedo about Get how to make it. a fruit juice fire machine that can keep the juice fresh! Uh... <laughs> Try Timaeus again. He does seem pretty eager to please after all. So we're going to Timaeus? Yeah, go to Monstats Alchemy Star. Oh, we got a snowman. Snowman toss or something pretty. Ooh. I can just continue with this. But yeah, I have to go to Alchemy Store. What is this? Hold up. Done. That was easy. Okay, anyway, back to the original quest. I need to go back here. Let's see Tamias. Tamias. Tamias! Traveler and Paimon, what can I do for you? Wait a minute. You've got <laughs> that mischievous look on your face. Oh, you're not still thinking yep. about that ridiculous juicer thing, are you? Tamias, will you? Uh, there's no us in this situation. I really have no stake in this. <laughs> no stake in this either way. Well, if the traveler isn't really interested, then uh, yeah, maybe I'll give this one a pass. <laughs> yeah. It's just the weirdest request ever. No, but Paimon Sunsetias are gonna go to waste without it. Hmm. And the time it would take me to research something like that. I could probably pick those Sunsetias again ten times over. <laughs> New research project, Timaeus? Vido? Um, we meet again. Oh. Oh, Albedo, thank goodness. Uh, so the situation is, Paimon wants a machine that can turn fruit into juice and keep the juice fresh. I mean, surely it's... Majorly important! Yes, Timaeus! <laughs> if you can manage to invent this, we'll never have to worry about fruit going bad ever again! That's impossible. Hey, wait a minute. Just thought there was a star. I saw it. Hey, what? Wait a minute. That's impossible. No way. The first time, he doesn't have his his neck. Turning fruit into juice is not hard. But keeping it fresh is more difficult. But if you simply want to keep the fruit from rotting, there are many ways to achieve this. Right, Traveler? Um... <gasps> Wait, what? He can... I don't want to say the neck though, but... The mark is back, yeah. Is this a prank? So, is this number two and he can hide, or maybe number three, I don't know which is it, he can uh, hide his, he can change his birthmark that he can show and now he cannot show, what? What about his neck? I didn't even say it. What? What's wrong? Is there something on my neck? Uh, no, it's fine. From the look on your face, it's as if you thought I just played a practical joke on you that wasn't exceedingly poor taste. Yeah. So it was a prank, huh? Albedo, you were saying, how do you stop fruit from going bad? Well, one way would be to bury your fruit on Dragon Spine. Bruh. Where the snow never melts all year round. Bury your fruit in Dragon Spine. You could always live on Dragon Spine. <laughs> no, no, too cold for Paimon. And she let me send Or her. you can give the fruit to me, and I would take it to Dragon Spine for you. But since you don't like the cold, you'd have to send someone else to pick them up when you want them. Yeah. This is where you come in, traveler. Suddenly sounds a lot more feasible with other people doing all the work. Hmm. Okay then, shall we go with that idea? 
fruit buried on dragon spine will stay fresh for much longer. However, it is also possible that the fruit will sprout and grow into fruit trees. Who knows? Maybe the next time you visit, it will have grown into an orchard. You can water <laughs> the trees, add fertilizer, and when they finally bear fruit, you will have some fresh sunsetias. Uh, no way! <laughs> Think being a gardener is so bad? Hmm. Doesn't he care about what the mic means? Albedo! Stop trying to get your hands on Paimon's super sweet Cinderella! <laughs> <laughs> it bothers you, does it? Okay, but they're just sensetias. I think you're only so attached to them because you don't have much fruit of this quality in your possession. When someone's pockets are full and their spirit is fulfilled, they don't easily fall prey to this kind of yearning. Mm -hmm. uh, really? Yeah, it makes sense. I finished Act 3 already? Wait, how many eggs are there? Is it over? Is that it? So the event is done? I think I, I finished the event. That's it. But I was confused with the, the birthmark thing. The star thing. It, what was that about? Albedo is still here. Dragon spine is too cold for ordinary fruit trees to survive. But if one day Dragon spine did become home to gardens and orchards, there would be more reasons for people to visit. Perhaps life is the key to a little life is the key to attracting people. Life may exist in all kinds of unfathomable forms and in all manner of unthinkable environments. Mysterious, yet tenacious. Perhaps this is what makes life so special. I'll be the you oh, are one you year. Okay. Well, this one it keeps uh, highlighting me to go here. They are highlighting me to go to challenge. Hey, well, there's a how to say it's like a like a boss you can go to like like the other stuff here. Yeah, the fell flowers there. All right. Maybe only last for one day because this event is ending. I don't know. Exactly one day. <laughs> but I finish. Uh, but I finish all three in in one day. Huh? Okay. So yeah, I don't think there's any more. That's that's all. But yeah. Okay. Well then. Uh, I guess that's it for sh this event. I'm finished the event in time. <laughs> But I didn't do all this stuff. I didn't do all this uh, whatever events here. So I didn't do anything yet. But okay, I finished this event. Uh, the story, not not these three. <laughs> okay, guys, I think that will be it for this video. Also, so thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.